Hi, it's The Wire. December 10th, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me caution people here, and I need to caution people. Right? Um, understand I'm not afraid to go wherever the film and the odds take me. If I see a fight that's a 60-40 fight, in other words, the guys fight 10 times, the favorite wins six times, the underdog wins four times, and that fight is mispriced. In other words, that fight has the underdog, let's say, winning three or fewer times out of 10. And if based on styles, I think the public's not appreciating the fact that the underdog, if the fight goes a certain way, is going to have certain advantages that I'm not afraid to take the underdog. Understand what that means. It means that I'll go into boxing weekends like this weekend with multiple bets on underdogs who I think are undervalued, right? I'm not expecting to win 50% of my bets. But if I do, or if I win the right bets, bets with huge mispriced underdogs, then I'm going to be in the penthouse. So I need to have folks understand that really the odds and the styles determine who I'm betting on, not the personalities of the fighters, nor the reputations. Now that's very important in listening to what I have to say about Sander Martin, a plus 475 underdog, and Teofimo Lopez. Let's talk about bias. Let's talk about why I think the line is so wide, even though Martin has had a successful career and beat Mikey Garcia. Right? I believe the line is mispriced here. Because Teofimo Lopez, in a different weight class, beat Lomachenko, right? And because Teofimo reminds people of Floyd Mayweather, right? You see Teofimo, he's in a Philly shell. He has the explosive left hook of Floyd Mayweather. He's a master counterpuncher. Right? He's able to land clean counters just like Floyd. What I want people to consider here is just the idea that just because someone reminds you of an all-time great doesn't mean the person is an all-time great. Right? Floyd Mayweather was a better athlete than Teofimo Lopez, just front and center, right? Faster hands, faster reflexes. Floyd also had a back foot game that Lopez is just figuring out, right? Now, both guys are pot shotters. Both guys have punches. Young Floyd was a puncher, folks, right? But understand, Mayweather had the game locked down at a young age. I need for people to look up Floyd's history and see his age when he got his first title against Renato Hernandez, right? Floyd was like A-Rod in baseball. He's a savant, right? This is the guy who enters the room with a sophisticated game. I view Teofimo Lopez as a guy who's still learning the game. Now, understand, Sandor Martin is not what he seems. Against Mikey Garcia, he was on his back foot. He's adept on his back foot. He can beat you on his back foot. But understand, there are also films of Sandor Martin where he's showing you that he's a combination puncher with a front foot game. 
I know he's older than Teofimo Lopez. Just understand, pot shotting counterpunchers have a problem against combination punchers who faint a lot. You have both of those things here in this fight. Let me also point out, too, that Martin is the kind of guy who, against Mikey Garcia, a knockout puncher, was not afraid to back into the ropes. He has a decided foot speed advantage in this matchup. Right, so, just understand, folks, this is 140, it's not 135. Understand, Teofimo has a recent loss to George Cambosis. Right? Understand, Sandro Martin is a vet in his 30s. Quite frankly, he's not caught up in the hype. This is not the guy who Teofimo signed up to fight. Teofimo thought he was going to fight Jose Pedraza. Right? Another fight who would have been difficult for Teofimo Lopez. So the public doesn't seem aware of it. But this fight, in my opinion, is high risk. For Teofimo Lopez. So, because I see this fight as a 60-40, right? Teofimo should be favored. He hits a lot harder than Sander Martin. Lopez only has to be right once. Right? Lopez also is younger than Mikey Garcia was when Garcia faced Sander Martin. So while I believe Lopez should be a 60-40 favorite, Understand, Martin should be going off, in my opinion, at no more than a plus 150 underdog. So, the bet I like, since the casino's giving me more than twice that, right? If the casino is giving away odds, you might as well stand in line and collect some. The bet I like is Sander Martinez at a plus 475. Swing for the fences. Come strong or don't come at all. Right? Sander Martin at a plus 475. And the hedge is going to be the under eight and a half rounds. Understand, you're making a bonanza there. You're getting a plus 270 there. In other words, if Either of these hit, you're in the penthouse, right? You're getting at least a plus 270 on both sides of the hedge. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If Teofimo Lopez wins a decision, and he's the favorite, right? And you have some judges who you know, seem to be inclined to vote for favorites. Also, Teofimo is the person who people like Regis Progre are calling out, right? There's some big-time fighters. Uh, Teofimo's talking about wanting to fight Josh Taylor, right? If Teofimo wins this fight, there's some big-time fights ahead of him. So picking him, if you're a judge, is probably better financially for the sport. Right? So just understand the risk involved. If the fight makes it past the midway point of the ninth round, and if Lopez either gets a late KO or gets a decision, you lose it all. Let me just tell you, I feel that if a boxing match, not a fight, but if a boxing match breaks out, Lopez is going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble, folks. Because Sander Martin is the better boxer, right? He's the one with the completely advanced back foot game. And quite frankly, if he starts beating Lopez on the scorecards, if the dynamic breaks out, which broke out in the Mikey Garcia fight, where Martin realizes he can just back away from you and has enough skill and feints to paralyze you. There are times in that Mikey Garcia fight where Garcia looks paralyzed. He can't throw punches because, like Vladimir Klitschko, 
against Tyson Fury, he's being fainted out of his shoes. If Sander Martin takes over the fight, he's going to start winning round after round on the judges' scorecards. And just understand, he's excellent at counters. He's a southpaw. I know Lopez thinks he does well against southpaw. Everyone does until they face a crafty southpaw. Martin is able to throw straight left-hand counters, right? If he hurts Lopez, then you're going to see a different Sander Martin. You're going to see the one on his front foot. Just look through the videos here online. That's two-handed with hand speed, right? Don't be surprised if Martin runs away with this fight. That's a distinct possibility, right? Lopez is not fighting Lomachenko, right? He's fighting a bigger guy who's already beaten Mikey Garcia, who came in that fight headhunting, right? And who has a game that's geared to throw off lower volume pot shotters like a Teofimo Lopez, the fact that he's a replacement makes it that much worse because I'm not sure if Lopez fully appreciates how unique this opponent is. I don't think Lopez signed up for this. So here again, I'm taking a live underdog over the favorite. I like Sander Martin plus 475. I'll also add in the hedge of under eight and a half rounds, right? So if Lopez comes out and scores a knockout in the first eight and a half rounds, right? And Lopez only has to be right once. If he scores a knockout in the first eight and a half rounds, you're good. In fact, you're better than good. If you bet even the same amount of money, on Sander Martin to win the fight, plus 475, and on the under eight and a half rounds, plus 270. Understand if either happens, you make a profit. Do the math. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.